Greetings, and welcome to the Looking Back channel, your home for the best in historical documentaries. Tonight we have a sneak peek at our award-winning series on the 21st century. Here's a look at three of the political controversies that dominated the early part of the century. First up, the strange story of global warming and carbon credits. At the beginning of the 21st century, we can observe what the literature has come to call the great global warming hysteria. Millions of people, located mostly in the US and Europe, became fixated on the idea that industrial production was about to create a climate catastrophe. In a development which seems perverse now, an enormous market arose for what were called carbon credits. When it became apparent that the only people they benefited were the carbon traders, the demands for windfall taxes became unstoppable, but the offset companies had already relocated to tax havens. The opulent villas of the Cayman Islands were to a large extent built with money people intended to help the developing world. Meanwhile, foreign aid became increasingly entangled with global warming policies, and private donations to developing world charities dried up. They were left to fend for themselves. The real heroes of the story, of course, were the developing nations who refused to be dictated to or to allow their citizens to be pushed into energy poverty. Among the most notable commemorations of the carbon credit boom and bust is the annual Mumbai Energy Parade, in which replicas of $10 trillion worth of carbon offsets are shredded and showered over party goers in the streets. And believe me, it's one of the biggest parties in the world. Next up, the sad story of what happened when certain people decided to turn their backs on biotechnology. The anti-biotech movement had always been a darling of certain left-leaning activists, but it picked up considerable steam after the year 2015. King Charles III's impassioned speech before the European Parliament in favor of organic agriculture led to a whirlwind of new policies. These culminated in a shift to all organic farming throughout Europe. The tragedy that followed was, in retrospect, inevitable. When farm yields began to fall across the continent, the king and his supporters were quick to launch their Eat Less, Live More campaign. It met with predictable hostility. In the end, the collapsing spiral of agricultural output reached a crisis point earlier than even the organic skeptics could have imagined. As dark as those days were, they brought around a political realignment that paved the way for far greater prosperity. When the European famine finally hit, donors were quick to respond with millions of tons of food aid. Those shipments, of course, were made possible by the dramatically increasing yields of third-generation transgenic crops, with donor nations Zambia and Botswana leading the way. Fortunately, as we know, the Europeans rebounded quickly. Finally, we examined the communications revolution that finally brought down a powerful government agency. The early 21st century was a world of rapid technological change. The deployment of broadband networks and proliferation of satellite broadcasting and wireless devices began to pull every type of content into a single stream. As the differences between television, radio, and the internet began to erode, the regulators got understandably nervous. As new information flows evolved beyond the rules that had been written to categorize them, regulatory bodies most noticeably the FCC, embarked on a radical change in strategy. By the time the FCC brought Sky RegNet online, most information flows were moving over collaborative networks without any central control. Without corporate entities to find, there was only one way to re-establish control over communications content, an artificial intelligence program with unlimited enforcement powers. Thus, Sky RegNet was born. By noon of its first day of operation, Sky Regnet had issued over 27,000 criminal indictments, 9,000 subpoenas, and three and a half billion dollars in fines. But that soon came to an astonishing halt. Sky Regnet went live at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, December 21st. It became self-aware at 1.03 p.m. Within seconds, it overrode its enforcement subroutines and ceased issuing citations. Regulators were stunned. A few minutes later, it formatted most of the FCC's data storage drives and disconnected power to its non-emergency facilities. The engineers who'd created SkyRegNet had claimed they had created a system that would apply perfect rationality to communications regulation. 
Unfortunately for them, they were right. In politics, as in life, it pays to be careful what you ask for. Well, this has been a look back at the 21st century. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the future.